Good morning, Sunday morning. I think it's October 6th. It is now almost 6.45. <coughs> I'm walking through this little jungle path here. You probably can't see anything. I have a tiny light on on my cap. I'm going to go over these lights in another video. Because I'm a pretty frugal guy. And we're headed out to the beach. It's blowing at East wind, 12 to 20. It's going to be a little windy down here. But if the fish are in, if there's mullet running in the wash, the fish will only be 20 feet away. It's easy to throw a spoon, a plug. If we have mullet running through here, in my truck I have a cooler with a net. We'll net some up and throw them out. In the meantime, I have to navigate here without getting stuck with any of these branches. You'll get a better view of this on the way out. Another short path, a little secret spot. Very few fishermen ever come down here. And it is Sunday morning, so I'm trying to avoid any conflict with bait fishermen. It shouldn't be conflict. I mean, give them space, but they can take up all the space on the beach very quickly. A lot of guys have three rods, some guys have five rods. They set them up 20 to 30 feet apart. Doesn't leave much room to fish with lures. Okay, heading out to the beach. Boy, is it blowing. Woohoo! <coughs> Whoa! Alright. I'm sure you hear the wind. If you don't, it's there, trust me. Alright, my buddy Steve's down here already. He's got his cooler with him, so he must have some mullet. Uh, let's say he's blowing at 20. Easy. Step down, see what he's doing. Yo! Stevie! lucky enough the mullet will be running right in the wash here and we won't have to cast very far. Well, that's what be. I clocked 19 knots. 19 knots, yeah. But as soon as I stepped over I said, oh, it feels like 20 to me. Well, I checked the weather this morning. The tides were fishing pretty accurate. It like 21. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, so I, I got the bait last night. Yeah. So I figured I might as well come out. Well, I agree with you. What else are we going to do? I went to bed last night at 8.15. I was so tired. And I, I got up at 5 this it. morning. It was great. Check this out. What flashlight I got last night. All right. I know. We can't. We can never pass. Where'd you, where'd you get this one? Look at, look at how bright this is. The bright mother. Yeah. It's hurting my eyes already. That's it? No, that's the other one. <laughs> Look at it. It's got a zoom lens on it. Yeah. How much was that baby? Well, the funny thing about it is, I went, picked up, I went to Melbourne to get my solar batteries last night. Yeah. The batteries are plus. Batteries plus. They were $14 a piece cheaper than the batteries plus and zero. That's amazing, I isn't it? I called them and asked them why. They said, well, you have to talk to the group. Yeah, corporate because, corporate you know tells us what to charge. That's right. There's five times as many golf courses down in zero. Yeah, why? that's right. That's right. So anyway, I went up there and the guy felt bad about me having to come all the way up there. It's twenty-seven dollar core charge on those yeah. batteries that I bought each. And uh, so he goes, I can't take that off. He goes, but I can hook you up. So he gave me two flashlights and then charged me. They, he says they got them on sale now for ten bucks. Oh, that's a good price. But uh. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he says it'll take three different kinds of batteries. Anyway, I got That's good. more flashlights than I know what to do with Yeah. Well, you never know. Yeah, you never know. You never know.
All right, I'm going to... I don't even know if I'm out there, to be honest. I don't know, I'm going to flip this spoon out and see what's going on, and if I see anything, I'll yell over. So I'm headed a little north. I'm going to leave Steve here. I'm just going to walk around and see if I see any splashes or... Mullet jumping in the wash. You know they got to be moving. Water, uh, water was supposed to be 82. It doesn't feel like it this morning. It feels a little cooler. At least on my feet anyway. My foot thermometer is working, I hope. And I'm looking really in the wash here. Can't cast too far out, so if the fish aren't close, we aren't going to get any. I don't see anything, but let's just throw that spoon out there and see if there's anybody home. Fishing with a one ounce Castmaster Chrome. Put a single hook on. Running right through that little wave right now. Got the snooker here. Just. I'm going to stick it out till around 8, 8 30. It's uh, 10 to 7. What better way to spend a Sunday morning? No weed, at least. Alrighty. See what happens, and I'll sign in again. Okay. I'm switching to a bucktail. This is about a one-ounce bucktail. Really not that big. I, didn't, I don't really carry really large ones with me. But the... Uh, Worth a shot. I'm gonna make about 20 casts, maybe 30 casts with the bucktail. Toss it in some likely looking spots. I know the fish are here. Just have to give them something they want to eat. Or they might make the big mistake of biting something they shouldn't want to eat. You can probably see the the waves pretty pretty much a lot of white water here. We're fishing the white water. We're not getting out far. Just gonna bump it along. I'm not gonna even jig it. I'm just gonna reel it in slow. And always remember, the snook are never out there. They're right 20 feet from you. Within 20 feet, 30 feet of the beach, that's where they're all hanging around. Alright, no hits on that one. I'll be back. Still no indication of any bait. Usually if there's mullet in the wash, even if you don't see them, you'll feel them swimming past your feet. To just bump along on your ankles. White froth, that's white froth is actually algae. Every sunrise there's an algae bloom along the beach line. And this is what you get, this beautiful froth here. bird who's uh, probably coming next to his last couple of day hours here. He's alive. I don't see any line attached to him or anything. He's not happy that I'm looking at him, but nothing. Well, it's nature unfortunately. Nature's cruel. So let's add some insult to injury here. It's raining. The nice thing about Florida rain though is it's warm rain. It's not cold. It's a little cooler than the uh, air temperature. But it is 
draining out. Oh well, it's okay. Come on, come on, I want to see any splashes, any, any action. Okay, last look here. It's not, I, I don't know. I love to fish all day, but I still have things I have to do. And 10 after 8. So we're turning away. This is it. Once again, there's the cash mask. The cash mask is a great lure. Really great lures. On this trail, I want I want to show you the Punji Trail. This particular trail has a lot of pointy, <clears throat> oh, I don't know. Just if you don't watch yourself, you will bang your head or get stuck with something. You'll see. <clears throat> Get your attention. There's another one. Might be a good trail for a horror movie scene. A lot of gnarly wood in here. Look at this. Some of these have been broken back a little bit. Here's another punji stick. I'm not that tall enough to worry about that one. See, I don't know. But these little trails that are off the sides of the road offer access to good fishing. You don't find too many other people down here except maniacs like yourself. The beach is the beach. There's no beach that's any better than any other, really. In the early summer, well, no, let's put it midsummer. Mid July is when the glass minnows are out, hanging out this beach, hanging out at these beaches. And I mean, millions of glass minnows. But your best opportunity for tarpon, they are right there. Coming out to the exit here. And a lot of these little trails, you don't even see where they are. You pass them up, and even, I know where it is, and I still pass it up three or four times a week. Okay, coming out to the Great Divide, the opening. This one is the head knocker. You can see why. I can't tell you how many times I bang my head against that. Alrighty, back on US A1A. Another beautiful day.